Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. Saki here, and welcome back to another episode of American Truck Simulator. When we last left off, we transported the transport helicopter, the Chinook, without the rotor. So today, we're going to pick up right where we left off. It's only 2.24 in the afternoon, and our sleeping hours get reset when we go on one of these things. Let's see what the next uh, big thing is for us. Um... So the huge construction we haven't done, it's from Gallup to Raton, uh, New Mexico. Let's do that. We haven't done the huge construction yet. Looks like we are going to be in a Peterbilt question mark. So why not? Let's go ahead and take the job and see what we need to do. There's only four more loads to take, and that is counting this one. So only three more after this to do, and we will have done every single special transport in the Special Transport DLC, and we can just figure out what we are going to do after that. Hopefully it'll still be daylight by the time we get to uh, Raton. And there's also an achievement to drive all of the, the Special Transport routes. Now I haven't been keeping track of the routes that I've been running, but I mean, all I gotta do is look at my history and I think it will say where I've gone, you know, to and from. There's our Peterbilt. It's a white Peterbilt, and wow, that thing is an interesting build. We've got some valves, maybe some pumps. Oh man, I don't know what that's going to be, but that is a monster. Yeah, I believe we are definitely going to be using, yeah, the tail trailer right there. Holy crap on a cracker. I imagine it's very, very heavy for sure, and it sticks out on the sides pretty well as you can see in the mirrors oh man this is going to be uh, an interesting trip for sure all right let's go ahead and start up the truck get the parking brake off get our cruise control set which I guess the speed is fine I think the cruise pops up actually right below that yeah second gear has a little bit of pull with it now I think we have driven this route before. I think I remember this wide right turn out of this place. But this is going to be interesting. Definitely watching there are corners for sure. And it is a massive long trailer. So it's going to be um, interesting to get around these sharp corners like so. And I do remember this intersection and holy crap we almost clipped the dang fence. In fact, I think we did clip the fence right there. Man, oh man, oh man. Yeah, this is absolute nutso. You all had better stop. We have Gigantor coming through here. Yeah, I'd stop if I were you. The cops like, look, get over, but I don't think they need to be told twice. Yes, we have done this route before, so what will be brand new for us on this particular route is this monstrosity right here. Uh, what I could have done was look through and see if I had any other uh, massive construction jobs on a different route, uh, one that we haven't done, but oh man, we got to switch back from the right and then back to the left and then the off ramp. Oh man, this is going to be tough indeed. Luckily, the officer is blocking the left lane we're going to need all of that here. Get over as much as we can. All right, we did it. Now, I think we clipped the nose of the truck, but it's not our truck. We don't have to worry about it. We'll just stay towards the center. I mean, this thing sticks out quite a bit. The construction workers are like, yeah, look at this thing. We're like, I know. <laughs> it's huge. Yeah, well, it should be fine going through the city here. Man, it almost clips off that turn lane. It's a good thing no one was in that turn lane. They were going to be exiting right here towards Albuquerque. Now, this uh, may be a tad bit narrow, if I had to make a guess. We'll keep our foot in it as much as possible. All right. Sweet, so out on the open road, we can hit 40. I don't know what kind of engine we got in this thing, but we're gonna flat foot it one gear at a time and slowly get up to that speed. It's a five hour and 46 minute journey. We'll be there 
a shy after 8.30 p.m. So uh, consider this as one big day here in American Truck Sem. And we are almost to 40. Believe it or not, this thing is getting there, slowly and surely. That's what I like to see. We have plenty of gears. That's good. We don't have 13 gears, otherwise we'd be a bit topped out. We wouldn't have had the torque in the early gears to get going. But yeah, we're actually going over the speed limit. All right. Scale her back down to 40 then, please. And we'll just ride here. Let's take a look at this monster from the outside looking in. Yeah, special construction, my right foot. Take a look at this. I mean, valves. Man, that is nuts. Good thing we have that follow Dodge Ram uh, blocking the lane off, but yeah, we'll maintain our right uh, position here on the road. So thank you so much for tuning back into American Truck Sim for another week. Special transports have been fun. Only a few more to go, and it may almost be time. By the time this series ends, it should be fairly close to the NASCAR racing season in early February. So that actually turns out well. I believe the Monday series could switch to um, Surviving Mars, Mars Monday, I guess you could say. And then each Thursday before each race will be uh, myself and Brandon going at it again in the 2019 season. So hopefully the painters have gotten on the new cars that have been announced. I know Jimmy Johnson is driving the Ally Camaro this year. Uh, you have Ryan Newman in the six this year for Roush Fenway. Uh, as long as the Mustang can fit on the um, Ford body, I mean paint-wise, there may be plenty of the cars already released. Uh, one thing that Brandon and I have been talking about is the pack racing. Uh, this year there's going to be closer racing. They're, they're going to basically restrict the engines on tracks where they haven't restricted them before, forcing drivers to stay in the gas more. And if you have to get out of the gas, then you get separated from the pack. It's almost like turning nearly every race into Daytona or Talladega, where I guess the draft won't be important, but definitely rolling the corner will be, staying in the gas as much as possible. And we'll try to mimic that as far as the AI ratings are concerned, uh, keeping a tight pack together, which our first couple races is gonna be a shot in the dark. Uh, we know how the Daytona 500 is going to look. Uh, that isn't going to change. It's gonna be one pack survival, but then when it comes to uh, the second race of the season, Atlanta, I believe, it's gonna be an interesting thing. Um, usually Atlanta, the fast cars get strung out. Vegas, the fast cars get strung out. And this year there will be no stringing out. It'll be everyone in a big pack once again. And we just don't know what that racing will look like. So it's tough to do our series justice by, you know, just racing regular and saying, well, if they didn't have the restrictor plates on, this is what the racing would look like. We'll try to mimic the actual racing as best we can, the on-track product as best we can, and just see how that goes. There may be some surprise winners from all of this uh, pack racing. If more cars are more equal, it will come down to the driver who makes the least mistakes rather than the driver whose team invested a lot of money in that new suspension or uh, the team that has spent a lot of money in the wind tunnel massaging a fender. Um, all that is gonna basically go out the window and it's like, what line are you in? Who is gonna push you? And you know, how long can you stay in the gas? So it'll be an interesting new product. So we'll change up uh, this year. But I do really enjoy making the NASCAR series even if our product on Thursdays doesn't look exactly like the product on Sunday. It's still good to race with your best friend, so uh, we'll be looking forward to that. And that's, like I said, about the time that this series will come to a close as far as the Special Transport DLC, uh, and then NASCAR will pick up, and I'll still have five videos each week. I'll just move the Thursday series, Surviving Mars, into the Monday spot. Um, 
continuing with the strategy theme, I was also thinking that Civilization VI is coming up with a um, an expansion. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head right now, but it simulates power and natural resource usage and um, land change. So, you know, um, over farming, that sort of thing, volcanic eruptions, um, blizzards and sandstorms, sort of bringing the world to life and affecting your cities in certain ways. And I believe Hearts of Iron 3, the series, will be done by the time that comes out on February 14th. Uh, so I may give that a go. We'll make that a series. We'll do a run and see uh, how different it looks. A nice casual uh, Civilization 6 playthrough. I have played Civ 6 on my channel before. Uh, I was Egypt and we were doing the Rise and Fall expansion shortly after that came out. I got distracted. New games came out. I wanted to play them instead. Didn't have enough time to record Civ 6 and never got back to it. That's one of the series that, you know, I have abandoned. But hopefully the, uh, the new Civilization pack is pretty fun. And I don't, and I won't feel the need to get distracted or uh, not play it anymore. I don't know. Rise and Fall to me seemed like a, I mean, it was a good addition, but not enough to keep my attention for like a series to play through week in and week out. Not like Crusader Kings or Europa, where um, events happen and the wars are interesting and the, the diplomacy deals are interesting. But the new DLC for Civ 6 is supposed to, you know, encourage new diplomatic uh, victories and diplomatic points and you're standing with the world as a world leader and that'll be a pretty cool change uh, rather than just racing to one of the tech victories or the science victory, you know, or the uh, faith-based victory or the entertainment victory, it's the diplomacy victory. Are you elected world leader? and uniting the world under your banner, which is a, a good change. I'm glad they put that uh, back in. So really excited to give that a try. Uh, Surviving Mars is going off without a hitch. Uh, really enjoying Surviving Mars. We're, we've placed our second dome at this point, and by the time you see this episode, there will actually be another episode of Surviving Mars that I haven't even recorded yet, so I don't know what happened last Thursday when you see this. Uh, but as of now in recording this, the second dome is in, the pedestrian path is through. We have uh, got our second group of colonists on board and we're starting to really make food, machine parts, getting ourselves self-sustained on the Martian surface so we don't have to request any more uh, supply drops. We can just be on our own, which is the ultimate goal of any colony really, is to not need anything from your overlord. Um, if you can produce everything in-house and sustain your way of life and improve your way of life with what you've got to work with, all the better. So slowly but surely working on that. Europa Universalis is also taking away nicely. Um, taking land, beating up on Cologne, uh, trying to dismantle the HRE, but I don't know if the Holy Roman Empire can be dismantled. Um, with that glitch that we had in the last patch. Some of the electors are no longer there. So it knows a country is supposed to be there, it just doesn't know what country. And if you can't attack a blank country, then you can't defeat the blank country. So that may be a little bit stuck, but I'm looking forward to see if I can transfer uh, the Europa Universalis save into Victoria 2, which you know, they've patched Europa just a few weeks ago. They haven't touched Victoria 2 in years. So, you know, at least it's not a two-way conversion trying to keep up with both games, but I don't know if there is any converter out there that will allow us to continue our game from uh, game to game that works with this version. So, you know, I may end our Paradox run there and might try like Stellaris or a brand new game, who knows? But the Sea Duck, if you're wondering about uh, the progress of the plane that I'm going to be using for X-Plane, the uh, throwback tailspin uh, double 
propeller engine seaplane that Baloo flew. Um, it's coming along. The base model in X-Plane is done as far as the aerodynamics. It's just a crude model that the game uses to um, calculate the wind resistance. If, as the plane flies through the air, what part is going to hit the air? That's done. I'm working on the internals now to get the plane off the ground. The engine power, the fuel, you know, what uh, systems are needed on the plane. I've got just a basic two-dimensional cockpit that is serviceable to try all of the different things, but it's not the final product by any stretch of the imagination. So working on that, I'm hoping to get the Sea Duck airborne this week. Once I am sure that the Sea Duck, oh, this is gonna be a tight squeeze, get over. Whew. Once I'm sure that the Sea Duck can fly and is airborne with all of the necessary systems, then I can work on modeling the high poly model uh, that will make the Sea Duck really pop and look like the Sea Duck. The first step is getting the Sea Duck to handle like the Sea Duck. The next step, oh God, geez, he's slowing down. I remember this. I remember this, officer. You need to get on over, good sir. So the first step of any plane in X-Plane is to get it aerodynamically sound. Then the second step is to get the systems on board and make sure that the, the plane behaves in the air as it needs to. And then it's just the window dressing after that, getting the high poly model done and assigned to the aircraft. And then getting the animation so every flap that moves, the you know any light that flickers, all of that stuff has to get rendered uh, and placed on the, the aircraft and then scripted to work with the button presses in the game. Uh, so X-Plane from a base standpoint allows you to just drop in a switch and it knows automatically where it's going to go. If you put in a throttle, it knows that, hey, when I move this throttle, it's going to, you know, make the engine go faster. Well, when you import a, a, a model that you have done, the game doesn't know what that throttle is. It doesn't know that that is a throttle to even begin with. It just knows that it is a part that is animated to go backwards and forwards. So that's where the scripting comes in. So you tell the game that when this animation does happen, make that the throttle. So I have to do that for every switch in the cockpit, the control stick, I mean, everything that I want to do. Um, once the high poly model for the outside will be first. Once I get that, then I can work on the flap animations and the, the ailerons and the elevators, the things on the outside of the plane that physically move when you move the stick. Once that's all well and good and I have a good looking sea duck on the outside, come on cop, what are we slowing down for here? And we need a good looking sea duck on the inside. So that is from the ground up building the cockpit based on the drawings I have, putting in every single switch, every single gauge, assigning animations for anything that moves in that cockpit, and then telling the game that when that stuff does move, make this happen. So it is a long process for sure. If you want to do it right, it is a, a very long process. But it's, it'll be worth it in the end. And I want to do some videos on flying the thing. And I may even do a status update, like say once a month, to say that this is what I've been working on. At this point, this is what it looks like now. This is my roadmap of what I would like to do. And just sort of keep people in the loop as far as making, let's turn on our lights for safety, as far as making the aircraft goes. Oh man, this hill is vicious. So I've been keeping myself pretty busy, as you can probably tell when I'm not recording videos, I'm working on the Sea Duck, or I've even been continuing Farming Sim 17 to try to get the last few achievements before I move on to 19. I'm a, a bit of a completionist when I am this close to 100%ing a game. Usually I don't worry about achievements. Um, 
I'll just play the game until I'm tired of it or find something else. But if at that point I realize that I am just like one or two achievements away from getting all achievements in the game, I'm like, you know what, screw it. I'm, I'm gonna stick with it until I get them. And I only have four achievements left in Farming Sim 17, and they're all easily done. They just take a while to do. Well, as with anything in Farming Sim, I guess, that I have to breed, I think it was 30 sheep, 50 pigs, and 20 cows. And I'm working on the sheep and the pigs, um, just farming, letting, letting the animals do their business. I could always go in and buy a whole crap ton of pigs and a whole crap ton of sheep so that the reproduction rate speeds up and I can get the achievement tonight. But I'm just letting them naturally go. I'm going to maximize my profit. You know, I only spent however much for five sheep and I only spent however much for five pigs. And when I turn around and sell 50 pigs, that's going to be a massive profit. And when I sell 30 or 40 sheep, that's going to be a massive profit. You know, I, I can't bring myself to speed up the achievement along. I've got time and I've got patience. Otherwise, I wouldn't be playing farming sim, I tell you. And then once I get the sheep and the pigs done, then I can focus all my energy on cows, breed the 20 cows, and then the literally the only achievement I'll have left after that is starting a new game and going bankrupt on the first day. So, <laughs> you know, take every dollar you have, buy a piece of equipment, withdraw a loan or, or hire a worker, and all of a sudden you're at zero balance and you complete the achievement. So that's going to be the easiest achievement to do. And Farming Sim 17 can come to a close. Now, does that mean that Farming Sim 2019 is coming to my channel? Uh, I don't know. I like to do a lot of stuff, you know, at my pace. And my pace is probably slower than the average YouTube viewer, which I imagine that's um, evident in the views that I get on these videos, that my speed is not a, a YouTuber's speed. I guess people want to see results in a series like right away. They want to say, okay, if you're going to play this game, you, you're going to play it at maximum speed. You're going to not make any mistakes. You're going to complete it in one sitting and it's going to be amazing. Well, that, that's not me. I never accelerate time without good reason. Hearts of Iron 3, there's a pretty good reason. There's literally nothing that we're going to do for six months. So I can speed through that time. But something like Surviving Mars, I've even watched guys like Quill, who are very good at strategy games, fall behind taking care of their stuff because they have been playing on the fastest speed. Um, they think, oh, I've got it. Everything's running self-sufficient. If a problem pops up, they may not see it right away, or even if they do, that accelerated time is time lost that if something comes in on speed one, normal speed, it's like, hey, this building ain't working. I can get there immediately before the damage grows. Um, same thing for Europa. I go at speed three, so it's not too awful long. The days still pass, but when it comes to war, I will slow it down. Like, I want war at speed four or speed five. I want every motion, like, down to a science. I want, you know, every movement to be thought about first. And then for, for YouTube as a whole, there's no time for thinking. You do. Um, for example, I also see uh, some people commenting on, say, Jeff Fabiano's flight sim videos. And he is a thorough simmer. He wants to go through pre-flight checks accurately. He wants to follow the manual of the plane. He wants to know the aircraft. And I love that. I will sit and watch a 35-minute startup video. Like, not even leave the, the taxiway just starting the dang airplane like that stuff interests me like all the um, the integration and all of the all the stuff that you do like that's interesting to me I guess American truck is the the lesser of the two evils the you can just take a job and off you go or you can drive around for a bit and find the most ideal oh, come on officer you can hold 40, make them move around you, not vice versa. 
Move the rifle around your head, not your head around the rifle. Tell you what, he disrupted my train of thought. I know I was talking about uh, methodical and, oh, American truck sim. You can just hop in a truck and you can take a quick job, as we did here, or you could take your own truck and methodically go from city to city, look for the best deal, plan your route. You know, you can play it both ways, which is very cool as well. Jeez, thread the needle right there. So we're two hours away from uh, Raton. Looking to be there at 11.30 now, so we lost three hours doing these little brake checks behind the officer. If we just stuck at 40, we would have been there um, an hour ago. But every little brake check compounds and compounds. And I don't know what loads we have yet to do. Uh, looking at the list, we could probably figure it out. Shooting star or artillery. That's right, it was the artillery range that was uh, being shot over. I made a comment on the, the last time we drove through here at nighttime with the artillery firing overhead. Kind of feels like deja vu. When the lights, when the lights go out, everything looks the same. But we do remember the artillery shells. It's a good thing I got a look at the load during the daylight for sure. It'd be near nigh impossible to get a good screenshot of the truck now that it's uh, 10 o'clock at night. They're really looking forward to a few games coming up. I'm not a big Resident Evil fan, but I will watch someone play it. It's kind of weird. There's some games that I know I will never play. Resident Evil 2 is a perfect example. But I still like the look of it, and I like to watch it. But as far as controlling it and actually taking time to play it, no. Don't think I'll touch that one. Of course, as an to, or a Paradox fan in to Rome, uh, watching Johan do some actual gameplay, you know, it's exciting. And I know they're highlighting Rome because, one, it's in to Rome. They expect people to play as the Roman Empire, but as with any Paradox game, you don't have to. You can start at, you know, any country that was around at that time, and you can make things very difficult for yourself. As anyone who's watched my Hearts of Iron 3 series can attest, countries are not built equal. You know, Germany in 1936 is a completely different beast than Iraq in 1936. That is for sure. But I like the challenge. And I don't know what country I would play as an Imperator to Rome. The Spartans or the Greeks are a good draw. Might get to play the Peloponnesian War. I wonder if it's, uh, I'm not exactly sure of my timeline, but I don't know if uh, Xerxes from the Persian Empire would make a, come on officer, we got a freaking load of dynamite or something in front of us and he's clogging up the road. Everyone's passing all of us. And then I think the AI's freaking out because the people in the left lane are trying to get over to the right and that causes that that truck to slow down thinking, oh, I'm gonna hit him, which causes the officer to slow down because we're not gonna move over and pass him. Not with this load. So we are at the mercy of a dynamite truck. Makes you feel all warm and fuzzy inside, doesn't it? I tell you, if our brakes failed and uh, we push that officer into the dynamite, at least in real life, that would be huge. In American Truck Sim, we would just go boom and then get fined for not, you know, driving correctly, even though it's all the dynamite truck's fault. But it looks like he's uh, sort of taken off, yeah. Everyone in the last lane is passing and heading on down the highway. Yeah, it almost seems like we're uh, not gonna make our rest stop. We're gonna be yawning and moaning and groaning before we even get there. We've got another hour to go. I'm glad the truck has enough torque to not lose too much speed on these hills. I didn't stop and take a look at how much this load weighed. 
I can look through the menu, but I can't really be bothered. We didn't lose too much speed there. I just kind of wish the officer would hold a steady speed whenever we're doing 40, but I know he's got to come back to us. A good lead vehicle keeps the vehicle he's leading in in the mirror. But if, if he wouldn't just let these people over, we could get a, you know, a bit more room here. And I wonder what kind of drop-off we're going to have. It better not be that one that we had some difficulty with. I'm trying to remember what the drop-off in Raton really, uh, really was. Passing the Farmington exit with some Jose Cuervo over on the right. Yeah, really looking forward to uh, playing some Imperator for sure. Some more strategy, some, some deeper strategy. I like the look of it. And the family aspect of Crusader Kings with the uh, warfare of Europa Universalis with the population feel of Victoria. It's like uh, you take every Paradox game minus Stellaris and you just cram them together. Now, no Hearts of Iron 4 battle lines. They didn't show off that, that you can you know, command your armies with one grand swipe of the map. But quite honestly, I don't think they really... I don't know if they plan that far out. Of course, you know, when you plan your grand campaigns, it's like, we're going to march into Gaul. We're going to head up here. But as far as, like, coordinating efforts and whatnot, I don't know if, uh... how in-depth the generals were in coordinating efforts and moving armies to Pincher and all the other stuff that the modern armies did. And then nowadays, it's like, well, just head in there and bomb the crap out of them, and if they, didn't, if they don't give up, send some Marines into the cities. That's really warfare nowadays. So 44 minutes, 17 miles. We've got the Raton exit. And I remember how narrow this thing was. And we're gonna, we're in an extremely long trailer. This is not gonna be fun by any stretch of the imagination. So when we exit, we're gonna be on the right hand side and then we're gonna have a, hopefully a sweeping left instead of a 90 degree left here. All right, let's slow it up. Let the officer lead the way. We'll sort of straddle this white line to make sure that we're not going to clip anything. And it does look like it is a much gentler left-hand turn than a 90 degree. So that is all well and good. We might knock down a few signs. Yeah, no one's coming. We can sort of cut that inside line a bit. Oh man, we do have one hard left turn to do. Once we get into the city. Alright, split highway here. That's a cool set of lights on that mountain. I don't know what that is. It's kind of like the Hollywood sign for New Mexico. Can't tell what that is. Is that a building or a, a sign itself? Not sure. Alright, officer. Time for you to get out there and do your job. There you go. All right, as wide as we can get. Cut it before the speed limit sign. All right, we're gonna be passing the HP Pavilion. And if, it, if it's that one that I got all turned around in, and I think it is, I know not to go left this time. Just continue on straight. Although it's going to be a bit painful. But we'll see. It, it may be a drop off on the right. Yep, here we come. Lock off the road, everybody. Massive steam valve coming through. All right, so we're dropping it off over there, and it makes sense that industrial plant would want this big old steam assembly. 
And yeah, there's the right hand turn. So it is gonna be straight, I do know that. Hey officer, let's go. I'm trying to keep the cargo. I think I had the last pro the that problem last time. All right. Here we go. Officer is going to turn off. And we are going to head on in. As wide as we can and we're going to go straight. We are not going to go left to get around this thing. Jeez. All right, coming down the road here. The right side is what we're going to be most focused on. We have to wait till the absolute last moment. Or did I screw up again? I think we need to go... We can't go right. Oh, so we have to go left. That's right. Okay. We didn't screw up. Didn't screw up. I thought this was the way we had to go. All right. Hard left turn. Stupid pallets in the way. We'll stay as far over as we can. Oh my god. And we have to swing this thing pretty wide again. Don't think we're going to clip any corners. We have to get on this side quick, fast, and in a hurry. Because the drop-off is over there on the left. And I think as wide as this thing is, we can't possibly cut it too awful close. Because that digger is going to be there. But we need to come in this as straight as possible. Right, I think this thing is ready to come over this way. Then we can cut it back right this way. I think we're scraping it just a bit, but no worse for the wear. Then we'll get back on center. And then just pull it straight forward and see, are we straight enough? Looks like we may be. I think we got away with it. Ding, please. All right, what happened? Yeah, we're still not too far to the right. You know what? I ain't even worried. I am not worried. Go ahead and roll back. Um, we're going to have to pivot it that way. bring the dolly to pivot the thing that way. Yeah, we're skipping parking on this one. I am not trying to squeeze that in there. So eight out of 11, we've got 21,000 bucks, buckaroonies, halfway through level 32. Awesome. So let's take a look at our progress history and see the, the deliveries we have done. So we got the huge construction, the transport helicopter, the turnkey house, the hull, tires and chassis of the haul truck, air conditioning complex, and we started with the giant silo. So if we was to look at the quick jobs, and we look at the, once it loads, the special transports here. We haven't done the reservoir tank, and that's an interesting bit. Uh, we haven't done the massive tech part. Giant silo, and the service boat. So service boat. Large reservoir tank and massive tech part is all we need to finish, but that is going to do it for me in this week of American Truck Sim. Ladies and gentlemen, like, share, and subscribe if you are so bold. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.